Good evening, everyone. Let me welcome you to meeting number 18 for fiscal year 2023 of the Advisory Finance Committee. Today is February 13th, 2023. Pursuant to Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted in person and via remote access in accordance with applicable law. This means that members of the public body as well as members of the public may access this meeting in person or via vir virtual means. In-person attendance will be at the meeting location indicated on the posted agenda for this meeting. It is possible that any or all members of the public body may attend remotely with in-person attendance consisting of members of the public. The meeting may also be accessed remotely via the link indicated on the posted agenda for this meeting. When required by law or allowed by the chair, persons wishing to provide public comment or otherwise participate in the meeting may do so by in-person attendance or by accessing the meeting remotely as noted earlier. Additionally, the meeting will be broadcast live in real time via Westboro TV, Verizon Charter, sorry, channel, Verizon Channel 28 or Charter Channel 192 and concurrently recorded and as soon as possible after the meeting posted on the Westboro TV YouTube site. Um, we will abate approval of the minutes until after our guest has had an opportunity to present. Um, our guest this evening is Alan Edinburgh a trustee of the Affordable Housing Trust, and he's going to be speaking to Article 16 on the current version 6 of the warrant. Huh. Alan? Good evening. Welcome. Thank you very much for um, having me here this evening to talk about this article for the Westboro Affordable Housing Trust. Article 16 um, reads, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $600,000 from Stabilization Fund Mitigation to the Westboro Affordable Housing Trust or take any other action thereon. Article 16 relates to the original um, senior overlay special permit that was issued by the Planning Board in September of 2018 for the development known as Del Webb Chauncey Lake. The permit included a requirement for mitigation um, where Pulte would either build 25 units of affordable housing somewhere else within Westboro within three years or pay the town a total of $1.4 million to be used for the construction of affordable housing. And just to clarify, this is mitigation in the original special permit and is not related to the Zoning Board of Appeals decision with the 70 units and the $9 million. So this is the part of the original mitigation. As part of that mitigation structure, there was a payment schedule, $400,000 would be due on that three-year deadline, and then $200,000 annually each year for five years for the balance, with a note that if construction is ahead of schedule, um, the total balance must be paid prior to issuing the final building permit for the last building they're building. Um, and there was also wording in the special permit that quote, this money will be designated for the construction of affordable housing and must be deposited in a separate town account established for this purpose. Now at the time, the reason for that being added to the special permits at the time this was agreed to, the trust did not exist. Um, and so that paragraph was actually one of the impetuses that had us starting to look at an affordable housing trust as a way to have the account established for affordable housing. And Alan, this is the mitigation stabilization fund that we currently have? This is the general mitigation fund, yes. The stabilization fund for general mitigation. And so the town's receiving money, but it's not in account, an account specific and separate for affordable housing. Um, so Pulte has, chose to, cho has chosen to pay um, the mitigation. The town has received $600,000 to date. And as you just asked, this is in the stabilization fund, you know, general mitigation. So transferring the funds to the housing trust meets the town's obligation for mitigation per the special permit. Um, putting it into a separate account specifically for the development of affordable housing. 
and the trust would hold these funds for specifically for affordable housing construction, which could be new construction, it could be acquisition and conversion of buildings, either residential or commercial. It's really net new, 25 net new affordable housing units. Um, and that the trust support for that construction might be in generally it wouldn't be, it could be direct construction, but it could also be subsidies offered to generate those units. Um, and depending on who's doing the building and when and why and how. Um, so at last week's meeting, the planning board with four present voted 4-0 in support and agreed that um, as appropriate, they would make a statement at annual town meeting of their support and that this meets the town's obligations under the special permit. Our ask this evening is a vote of support for the article. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Can you build or repair 25 units for $1.4 million? Can we build 25 units for $1.4 million? I mean, it seems no, like we're but be we, way can, shy on this. we can subsidize a developer to build those units. Ah, okay. With that money. Okay. Very good. And that, that was their intention too? Like, yeah. So, okay. Any other questions? I have the same question that Walter did. It was like it was a no brainer to Del Webb. It didn't seem like they would ever yeah. um, build it. Outside the article, I have some questions. Yeah. Go ahead. Wind up. Continue. Um, I just wonder if we could get some update on the kind of thing. If other people have article questions, they should go first. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to give a brief update of what. Um, yeah, sort of interesting. What last time you guys came, it was we learned a lot, and a lot, there was a lot going on. But it's been six months or so. So, so, um, so with, with the, within update? the last six months, um, we closed out our uh, COVID-19 emergency, emergency rental assistance program. We provided rent subsidies to um, 17 families. Um, to different degrees, we prevented um, 57 individuals from being evicted um, from their residences um, and provided a bridge um, that let them stay in their apartments until they could get the deeper, longer term state assistance um, related to COVID-19. Um, currently, we have a number of projects under consideration and underway. Um, the one that's furthest along is the home at 3 Baylor Avenue, which is off of Lyman Street, just north of uh, Lake Chauncey there, um, where we uh, acquired, we transferred the property um, for the taxes owed from the town at um, town meeting. And we are waiting for a final council review on the RFP to put it out to bid. Um, we had the home inspected. Um, we've had all the junk removed. <laughs> Uh, we've had it's, uh, the property resurveyed. There wasn't, we felt there, we felt there wasn't an accurate survey of the property, so it's been resurveyed and staked. Um, and uh, the technical review of the property is that it's not worth repairing. That the nature of the there's a load bearing wall that doesn't have studs. It's literally three pieces of three sheets of plywood with spacers glued in between, and so. The exterior shingling has asbestos, as does the floor tile and the masking underneath. And so um, we'll be putting it out for a tear down and rebuild in the same footprint for that. Uh, we hope to get that RFP out within the next several weeks. We're, as I said, waiting for town council to final up. I believe worst case, we'll approve the RFP at our March meeting. Um, but if we get it back sooner from council, we'll, we've already decided we'll call a special meeting for, just for that. Uh, we have um, a couple of um, properties um, owned by the town that we're looking at uh, potential development and what can be done, um, both for affordable and moderate housing. Um, one you may be aware of is at the end of Endicott Street, um, where the, if we built where we thought we'd build, the back windows would overlook the parking lot for the beach at Lake Chauncey. So it's at the north end, sort of kitty corner there. Um, and we're doing some engineering and, and concept work um, to see if, how feasible that is and, and what variances might be needed um, to go through in a friendly 40B. We think we could get um, three uh, townhomes, two-story townhomes, although we're considering that one of those units might be fully wheelchair handicap accessible single-story unit. 
Um, we've got some other properties in town that we're exploring what's, what potential we have to do housing there. Um, our largest initiative, which, will, um, which we've done some a significant amount of preliminary work on, would be uh, developing the under undeveloped portion of Two Rogers Road, which is property under the control of the Westboro Housing Authority. And, we'll, and we're considering and think that would be a prime location for a multi-story building um, three, possibly four stories of 62 plus senior rental units. And we're playing with numbers and how big, you know, we'd love to get 60 units in there. We think we, 30 is definitely doable. Can we get 40, 50? We're trying to figure out right now we're working with the town on footprint and some of the logistics as well as some of the machinations given that the property is currently controlled by the housing authority, what they want to do, what they're comfortable with from a, an affordable housing program standpoint and how that evolves. Um, we're also exploring a first time home buyers program, which is designed, um, it doesn't impact SHI, but it helps households that um, are at the very top end of qualification for affordable housing or even above it, but below being able to afford a market rate home, um, assistance to get them into a market rate home. And that's, it's designed, it would be designed for existing Westboro residents who are renting to move into a residence within Westboro. Um, it, it was done successfully in Boston. MHP's rolling out a program in 12 gateway cities. Um, we're looking at a small, allocating a small amount of funds as a pilot to see if there's demand um, and build that structure out. And that program could also have eligibility not around residency, but around town employment as well. So it could be something that we could offer um, first-time home buyers assistant to town employees mm -hmm. who want to purchase in Westboro. And so that's in the exploration phase. Could, um, could you explain friendly 40B? Okay, so friendly 40B. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I threw out a term. So 40B is the chapter of Mass General Law that states if uh, communities um, percentage of affordable housing is calculated by the Department of Community and Housing Devel or Department of Housing and Community Development (DHCD) is below 10 percent. A developer can bypass the planning board and go directly to the zoning board of appeals, um, propose a project, get it approved under what's known as a comprehensive permit, um, without the town's direct involvement, and without being held to zoning bylaws, um, including the underlying zoning. And so um, we have, um, you know, several developments. There's, there's a development um, in town, for example, that has 120 units on land that is zoned R1 for residential. But it's a 120-unit apartment building was done. A friendly 40B is saying is when you're above that 10% threshold, but you're looking for higher density, you want to create affordable housing, um, so the development will have a higher percentage. The minimum is typically 20%. Friendly 40Bs can go as high as 40 or 60%. Um, and basically you work with the planning board and all of the departments and you come up with something that isn't conforming to the current zoning, but the town, the planning board, the departments agree is workable and feasible given the property, the location, the impact on the community, all of those things. And then you go to the zoning board of appeals for the comprehensive permit having it been agreed to. Um, and just, you know, given the nature of most zoning regulations at this point, um, many, any large scale project or sometimes small scale projects would be a friendly 40B. So when we look at, um, when we look at Endicott Road, for example, um, the reason it would be friendly 40B is because there isn't enough frontage on Endicott Road for an street extension <clears> or <throat> a, a typical driveway, right? And so that's just one example of a variance that that project would need. But we would work through the design, the layout, the engineering, everything with the planning board and the town departments. And if they agree it's feasible and workable, it'll, it'll be a nice living environment, it won't impact the neighborhood negatively, we're not going to create environmental concerns, public safety can get in, you know. Fire trucks take a lot of room, right? <laughs> you know, have to make sure all of that works, um, that utilities are feasible, 
um, there, then we would effect effectively negotiate all that and work through all the details with the planning board in the town and then go to the zoning board of appeals for the comprehensive permit. Um, and one of the advantages of the comprehensive permit is it's easier to guarantee affordability and perpetuity. Cool. Anybody else? Okay. Alan, thank you very much. We're, we're planning on voting on all the articles uh, sometime in March. Okay. And we have three members missing tonight. So I think to give them an opportunity to review the video of this meeting uh, and then we'll we'll probably vote on this article in March okay great and if there are additional questions that come up yep. for those three members after they watch um, if you're comfortable send me an email I can certainly reply that can be part of the would be yep. part of the public record or I'm happy to come back again thank you and answer any questions thank you appreciate you taking the time tonight my pleasure and it sounds like you got a full plate we do we've got a good really good team of trustees and very very involved very active um, sometimes we worry we'll take on too much <laughs> but not everything's gonna work out so you have to move 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 and something clicks and then you run with it it's good thank, Great. You. thank you again thank you thank you okay um, let's move on to the minutes uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 9th. 9th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Melanie, second. Any discussion? Okay, we'll go to a vote. Uh, Melanie? Board, yes. Bradley, yes. Leslie, yes. McMahon, yes. I'll abstain since I wasn't there, but I did watch the recording. Well, then that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Beretti, yes. <coughs> Five, oh, one. Okay. okay, we'll move on to liaison reports. I um, need to vote on the, the other minutes. Oh, yeah, you had a second set of minutes in the agenda the one from the, our joint oh the budget meeting. joint yes thank joint you very meeting. much yeah. um okay because they were a lot to read through yes they were thank you <laughs> and you did the work so let's vote on them. yeah um so can i have a motion to approve the mi minutes of the budget summit of january 26th so moved is there a second second bradley second any discussion on those minutes? They were pretty comprehensive, as I recall. Yes. I do notice that they they put down what the questions were, but not, not the, the answers. answers. <laughs> so maybe that makes sense for me to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah. good, but uh, yeah, she noted all the all the questions that were there, but not the answers. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's harder to yeah no. <laughs> do the go answers. back and go back and look at the recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. The answers can be long-winded. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll go to, if there are no other piece items for discussion, we'll move on to voting. Melanie? Board, yes. Bradley, yes. Leslie, yes. <laughs> McMahon, yes. Shafford, yes. Already, yes. Six. Oh. Oh. Okay. Now we'll move on to liaison reports. I know Rod has been doing some extensive work with the DPW <laughs> and uh, got up early Friday morning to uh, to meet with uh, with the DPW staff at uh, 8 o'clock um, so Rod can you bring us up to date please yeah thank you Mike um, you know first of all I want to give I met with Chris Payette uh, director of DPW and you know I, I told Chris when I met with him I want to thank him for his thoroughness in terms of his presentation and uh, you know there's a lot of material covered and Chris goes into quite a bit of detail you know really knows his stuff um, what I did relay and it's kind of my thought from the board and uh, you know he agreed was that the difficulty sometimes is when you're looking at articles based on one year without having the context of what's happening for the number of years after that so 
you know, I, I, I encourage Tim as he makes his presentations going forward to not only focus on this year, but the upcoming years. And, you know, I think what we want to do is, you know, have a level uh, funding of, of issues as they come forward. So, and he's, he's all for that. I mean, uh, certainly agrees. Uh, the two articles I did have questions were uh, Article 20 regarding the PFAS, which is a $6.4 million uh, estimated project and uh, you know really just wanted to get the status of that and he explained to me as he did at our uh, summit that uh, you know there is funding available first a zero interest loan and you know he, he certainly seemed to encourage that there was could be a significant portion of loan forgiveness which uh, uh, and in order to be in the running for that uh, money literally uh, you know he needs the support at the next town meeting you know, that being said, the 6.4 isn't, in my mind, a real number yet. It's an engineer's estimate. Uh, I prefer to have real numbers, uh, it's just my nature, but I think given the circumstance of getting the funding or potential funding, uh, I think it makes sense to go forward. So, you know, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, the second one I brought up at the uh, summit was the uh, Comprehensive Waste Management Plan. Uh, which is $200,000 over the next series of years. And uh, um, all I can say, it's complex. Uh, <laughs> the process is complex. Uh, I was concerned that the deadlines, there really wasn't a straightforward timeline, but understand that in order to go through the process, which is a multi-year process, there's a lot of data involved. Uh, they started out working with an engineer and now decide to do a lot with their own staff just because it's going through commercial property by commercial property, understanding what's been granted <coughs> previously for sewer capacity, trying to understand uh, what's going to be needed in the future. So, uh, you know, my, my big concern personally on that is that right now there's a moratorium on multifamily housing. So even this affordable housing trust presumably would fall under that. And until we understand what our capacities are and how they get allocated, you know, I, I think that's that's a concern. And so, you know, en encourage Chris to try to move as quickly as we can to at least a certain uh, uh, how that gets affected. Um, in terms of the other ones, uh, you know, uh, so they just finished a, and this isn't an article, but it's certainly on everybody's mind, so I'll, I'll share it because it was on mine. Uh, you know, we just found out that the country club, according to the analysis was done, uh, needs about $800,000 worth of either repair or code upgrades. And uh, this was part of a study that the town is doing of their existing buildings, which includes the Harvey building, uh, which also was assessed and also determined to need over a million dollars of repair. Um, so obviously these are significant questions, concerns, uh, I know um, the town in particular, myself included, and enjoyed the Civic Restaurant and want to make sure that uh, we take the appropriate measures. I have con some concerns about the report and whether there should be additional um, code analysis to be done either by the building inspector or a third party to make sure that we really do need to spend all that money. Uh, so. Well, you can make that a recommendation of, you know, if we could to the committee and we can vote on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, at some point, if you feel strongly about that and make a case for it. Yeah. No, I, I believe the selectmen is gonna, are going to bring it up at tomorrow's meeting, at least in terms of forming a committee. So maybe They're let's form a committee yeah. to yeah. investigate it. So yeah. that would be the people to give the yeah. input to right. it. Yeah. investigate the committee to them. Yeah. No, 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 I'm just, just, <laughs> I just, every time I hear form a committee. Yeah, I mean, that's the concern I have. We'll be yeah. two years down the line and, you know, we may have, there may have been a, simpler solution that doesn't isn't able to get implemented because we uh, you know spend more time doing our due diligence than getting something done but sidebar uh, so the other question that I also brought up at the uh, summit was the water and sewer rates and how those get established and to make that more transparent uh, as explained to me right now uh, Leah Talbot has a spreadsheet that she's used for many years uh, which is very complicated uh, and uh, I'm not sure if that's something we want to have her share with us in terms of how that's done. Uh, he also said they're having somebody, a consultant, do a, a study in terms of evaluating the water rates, which he say, says may be 
uh, lower than what they need. So uh, more more to come on that. But yeah, I would suggest that it would be good for this this group to have Leah uh, discuss how she comes up out it and. And you know, it's similarly to how we talk about the tax rate, uh, you know, understanding how the articles themselves affect the uh, the water and sewer rates. Um, the last item kind kind of came out of a sidebar discussion, which, but I was actually uh, uh, interested and think would like to learn more. Uh, he, there was kind of a sidebar comment as we were talking about that. Isn't that too bad that the town is siloed in terms of how? Uh, the municipal buildings, the school buildings, and the library do their their maintenance and capital projects. And uh, you know, I think there's potentially a good opportunity for those groups. And I'm just looking at it from an outsider, but uh, uh, it would seem to me that the budgets we see for maintenance and capital projects come from those groups independently, without them working uh, together. And there's certainly expertise within all those groups that maybe if they were shared and a more collaborative structure was developed, um, might be some opportunities to save the taxpayer. You mean make the process more efficient? Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, DPW has maintenance people, the school has maintenance people, the library has maintenance people, some of the capital projects, they have people, the school board hired somebody to evaluate their buildings, the, the town, hired somebody else to evaluate their buildings. You know, there, there's got to be some synergies there as we start to look at things. Now, there, there was some discussion, I want to say a year or two ago, part of this um, sort of staffing study where there were some recommendations on maybe combining. And I, I don't know where that ended up, but. I don't know either, but yeah. I could, we can certainly ask the town manager. I think there's some efficiencies that, you know, just top top of mind might be gain from it and if you can gain efficiencies you can save well you're, you're not just talking about efficiencies I think maybe if you had those people together to discuss peer review might be a better way to think of it almost that they yeah. might give each other uh, tips or yeah. insights to do better do yeah Something yeah, for, in, for instance, of. the school needs a new roof and the town needs a new roof on another building. Yeah. You know, let's that share sense. that expertise. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Chris, Chris was very helpful. I appreciate it, uh, uh, his input. And uh, the only thing I can say so far, uh, good news is so far the snow budget is below projections. <laughs> yes. 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 yes, it is. Yeah, they yeah. shouldn't be coming in. Yeah, don't be jinxing us. Bite, <laughs> bite your tongue. <laughs> bite your tongue, Rod. <laughs> There, there is, by the way, if you haven't seen the signs posted, there is a uh, uh, public hearing on Thursday. There are actually two, one at 11 a.m. and one at 6 p.m. on the stormwater proposal. And the, the proposed bylaws are in this latest version. So if anybody wants to attend one of those meetings, I'll be at the 11. I'm thinking... I could go to the six and get here in time for yeah. seven for the. Uh, I was thinking too. <laughs> yes. Have a hard stop. So if we come yeah. running in right before seven, no is the Is the six across the street? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's in well. Forbes. Yeah. So. When is that again? Next thir Thursday. This Thursday. It's Thursday oh, at eleven yeah. or at six p.m. Okay. So. Okay. Well, good. Thank you, Rod. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Okay, we had a uh, finance team meeting this morning, the town manager's finance team. Uh, one of the things that came up was with respect to the Warren Articles for Hastings. Um, the language has been crafted in the, in the uh, warrant to allow, the, and I'm paraphrasing, to allow access to all funding uh, to make this the uh, funding and, and spending more efficient. It's not a matter of relocating from one project to another, which was frowned upon several years ago by town meeting. Uh, but this was, uh, it's, it's specifically Article 9, or the, I think it's P and Q, if I remember correctly. But uh, for those members of the public who are listening, uh, several years ago, there was a, serious question about how money was being moved around uh, from one project to another, surplus funds, I should say, 
were being moved around from one project to another. Um, and it, it did not appear that it was in the best interest of the town to use money in that way. So for example, I think the, the crux of the matter at that meeting was the uh, playground at the Armstrong School. They wanted to use some funds, surplus funds that were, um, I believe at the time it was uh, a loan uh, that were borrowed. Surplus and borrowing authority, surplus I think yeah. it was. It wasn't yeah. even borrowed yet, I don't yeah. believe. Yeah. And, uh, People of town meeting took objection, and it was essentially that projects should stand on their own merit in terms of funding. And the town meeting voted that that's what they wanted to do, and that has been the practice going forward. So this is not uh, a violation of some policy or practice. Uh, it's taking things that were approved for Hastings and correct. putting it into a pot for Hastings. Exactly. A renewal. Exactly. So it's all for the same thing, but whether it's exactly a uh, this ADA or roof <coughs> or et cetera, it's all in the same pot. Exactly. Now, I did a question on this article because now, or maybe it's just missing the number still. Yeah, it's still, it, there's still not Because this talks numbers. about these two other numbers being in that pot, but it doesn't say what the new request is yet. No, not so. yet. They're still waiting uh, on those. That, that's a, N yeah, the number that that we'd be adding to it. In fact, the bids. I think she. I think Amber said this morning. I'm just looking at something here right now. Um, uh, where are we? Armstrong. Oh, that was the Armstrong roof. Yeah. No. Sorry. Um, yes, but you're correct. Exactly. It's putting everything into one pot. Uh, okay, there was also some information on ARPA funds, the uh, expenditure of ARPA funds. Uh, we've had the resignation of the uh, Director of Youth and Family Services, um, and until a replacement is found, the uh, ARPA funding of 77000 for um, behavioral health planning and um, the 148,000 uh, for the uh, youth and families case management is uh, is on hold. Uh, so as soon as a, a new director is brought on board, we'll take a look at those again. There may be some savings as a consequence. We don't know that yet. Savings uh, or do the funds run out? Pardon me. Aren't these time specific? Yes, funds? they are. They don't run out. They must be. They must be expended 26. at the end of. The, yeah. Is it twenty six? Yeah, I we think have. You have to decide by twenty four. Twenty four. Spend by twenty six. Okay. Correct. It's not, it's not. Yeah. There's still sand in the hourglass. Yeah, and it's it's not just a question as was brought up this morning. It's not just a question of saying okay, we'll allocate this much money to let's say youth and family services. You've got to Specify. have a contract or some indication that the money is indeed being. Being used spent. for what you Yeah, being used for what it was intended. Okay. Uh, the recreation department is pulling the splash pad. And um, so it appears at this point that that will not go forward. Uh, but And how much was that? Uh, 300, 200, 275,000. Oh. But um, we're taking a look uh, at how some of that m might be used for recreation activities including for the dog park. Uh, we're waiting to hear on the, um, the grant that we're anticipating from the state on the, the uh, funding of the dog park. So uh, I guess a lot of dogs were acquired during COVID and that's how that money gets assigned. Uh, That's so a lot of bones. That's a lot of milk bones. A lot of milk bones, <laughs> oh, yes. Milk bones. <laughs> yeah. So there's about $500,000 in ARPA funds that are uh, on hold right now. Uh, at present, we have an uncommitted balance of $188,000. Um, and um, we'll see what other proposals come forward. There is some, uh, some money that we can expect to add back to that from the fire and police hiring because of flop over into uh, different budget years. But um, 
I don't think it'll be that extensive. So it looks at the moment like um, everything else is moving forward and um, we're just holding on those items. And then finally, if you've noticed on the new um, uh, articles, on the new warrant, there is a citizen's petition to uh, rescind the climate action plan. Can't give you any details other than what's in the warrant at the moment. And there are obviously, all, there's always a chance that before the warrant closes on the 28th that we'll get uh, additional articles um, either generated through the town departments or through citizen petitions. Nothing okay. unusual about that. We're at 35 right now. Uh, 35. 35. But some of them are multifaceted. Yeah. So well, it's probably about like, like 60 yeah. or something. Or yeah. 55. Or We're going to have a When you do, when you do a number remember, with an alphabet next to it all we, the way we down. We go through the budget table line by line pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> at least. And then you vote the ones that no yeah. one objects to. But right. It, yeah. There's we a have lot. a process. There's a lot. You know? Yeah. <laughs> we have a process. It'll work. You know, we'll may, we may be here late those nights, but it'll work. Oh, I'm talking about town meeting. Oh, <laughs> we're very efficient. We're very extremely Super efficient. Super yeah. efficient. Keep saying that. Absolutely. Um, okay. Um, I had anything another, else? Yeah, go ahead. Another please. area. Oh, um, I didn't know that. So, I, not a. It's not a report. It's a question. Okay. okay. So I took my own advice and went through the budget table one more time again, and some I found a couple of interesting things. And these aren't huge dollars, so I don't know if they're worth their time. Other than there, there's some big change going on here. Um, for instance, weights and measures going from. 2650 of expenses they requested 9500 and the town manager recommended 5500 you know it's a hundred and eight percent increase um it's bound to get a question at town meeting i didn't what know if on, we wanted to at least get a 20 second explanation of that or something what, what page are you on uh 30. okay good page 30 in the budget table gotcha. it's called uh, uh weights and measures um, similarly, the health department um, expenses is up significantly, 54%. Um, youth commission expenses, 126%. So I, don't, I think it'd be good just I to. I think the health department's probably surprising. I, there may be, uh, I mean, there must be some. Well, if you think about during COVID, they couldn't go out and do inspections, they couldn't go out, you know. Um, and then when they started all that kind of stuff back up. Um, okay. So you're saying years ago it was more and it went down in the budget? I don't know. We'll that's, find that's anyway, I don't know. I just, the last, I, what it was does, the last one you what? I thought it went up. I thought you were saying it went up. It went up. Um, but uh, so the third one uh, was youth commission, youth commission expenses. So it's health department expenses, youth commission expenses, and weights and measure expenses. Okay, well, not salary things, but no. anyway, they we, were big numbers that have some story, but they're in grand total of dollars. Yes, <laughs> not worth a huge conversation. Well, when, <laughs> but, when, but when, worth uh, some information when they're when the, the finance group is back or something, they, they'll they'll know the details. Or in fact, state. we did have a discussion about. Um, who we have on the calendar coming up and, and uh, the fact that we will be bringing some departments back just for, for example, schools to talk about their capital expenditures. But I'm sure that uh, Christy and Leah uh, are probably anticipating at least one more appearance to go through some detail. Um, Okay, uh, I do have copies of that free cash explanation for all of you. Mm -hmm. I had trouble with my um, scanner. So for those who are Remote? attending remotely, I will get a copy to you at your next in-person appearance. Uh, okay, future draft agendas uh, next, this Thursday, this week. Uh, Zach. Uh, Health department. It did go down. Sorry. He's just pointing something out in the. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I was looking at health department. You're right, it did go down. It went down, went down during in the fiscal 2023 budget. And then it's back up for 24. Yeah. Right, so but I think, uh, it's, I think there's a lot of things the health department right. wasn't well, anyway. able to do. Okay. It's a good we'll, story. We'll track it down. <laughs> Maybe they did a cut. Is it keeping you up at night, Walter? We will get an answer. Huh? I know people are going to ask at town meeting. I am curious. And our now. job is to know these things. He's it's weird see, that it drops for one year. He's going to see the audience. I know he is with that <laughs> question. <laughs> he asks when all sorts of things. Yeah, there'll be stuff coming. You know, I anticipate a lot of questions on the, the closing of the, uh, the landfill <coughs> for public access. Well, it's a private enterprise, well, not up to us. <laughs> right. Well, of course not. Of course not. But, you know, the question in people's mind, what do you do with yard waste, for example? That's a great question. Yeah. But we have another year and a half. Yeah, well, the, that's what everybody, keeps them up. they will work on it. <laughs> keeps me up at night, absolutely. You know, I uh, use yard waste a lot. Yeah. That's why I have a pickup. <laughs> right. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Thursday night, Zach Brugner is uh, going to be here. He's the Director of Economic Development. And um, we specifically wanted him to come in to speak to uh, the awards uh, that, we are, that, is, it, that are proposed for funding and what the success has been to date uh, with those awards. And uh, any other questions that might suit your fancy as uh, we approach that date? As, as we approach Thursday's meeting. And then um, we have on the 23rd, the animal control officer, and then um, select board member Shelby Marshall will be in to discuss the uh, CPA commitment, uh, committee and the Huckamucka Pond committee articles. And then on the 27th, we have the library folks coming in to talk about um, funding their initial work on repairs and then the warrant closes on the 28th and thereafter we've got everything reserved in the anticipation of having to bring back in some of the major departments just to follow up particularly on capital expenditure items okay any other questions any other business to talk about Andrew, anything? No, thank you very much for asking. Okay. Uh, all right. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Any discussion? We'll move to a vote. Board, no yes. Bradley, yes. Leslie, yes. McMahon, yes. Shafford, yes. Already, yes. Thank you, Westboro TV. Thanks, John. Arnold. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you next time.